It's the final box. Number 15 of 15. A journey will come to an end today. And yet, there's so much more work to be done. And so, without further ado, let's roll that intro. <laughs> Hey, Gengar gang, what is going on? My name is Ryan, this is the Analytic Gengar, and welcome to another video. In today's video, friends, a bittersweet moment as we complete the 287 card PSA graded return that I got back way back in October of 2021. I don't quite know when this video will go live on the internet. However, I do know it will likely be some period of time that has passed since. Uh, since that time has passed, however, I have been able to, you know, enjoy opening up each of these 15 boxes of PSA graded returns. I say it every single video, especially this run, but I got back those cards. I did a mail day video where I kind of broke them down at a high level. And ever since we've been doing a video, a box where we basically just take a look, go over the cards and chat a little bit about what's special, unique, cool, um, or interesting about them. And so without further ado, uh, you know, that's kind of the way this goes. Now, this card, I know for a fact, is very special. So we're actually going to put it over here. We're going to keep that card for last, and we're going to go through every other card in the meantime. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up is a Feraligator Hollow card. This is a really, really beautiful card from EX Expedition. Uh, there is a Blastoise that looks very similar, and very early on in this particular set of graded returns, I actually showed you that Blastoise and showed you that I got a PSA 10 for that card. So there's a Feraligator, there's a Blastoise, both of them look really dope. By the way, down below and at the end card will be the playlist for my PSA graded returns here on the channel, as well as, but not limited to, select videos that you can go watch. And if you like that type of content, make sure to leave a like on this video, go check out those videos, and the best thing you can do to support if you appreciate what I do over here on the channel is to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, moving right along, we have a Undaunted Umbreon. So this is where I start getting into the Pet Project Pokemon cards that I had assembled. I had basically been buying a whole bunch of Prime cards because I know Umbreon and Espeon will always be, you know, really, really sought after cards. So yeah, as you can see, I have like Sequential Cert, PSA 8s, Umbreon and Espeon. These are beautiful cards. These are eh, more or less going to stay in my collection for you know forever um unless someone comes along and chooses to like buy me out but i know for a fact i got multiples of each so here is a psa 9 and i believe this is about as high a grade as i got on any individual one unfortunately they are not sequentially asserted but i do know i think i have an umbreon as well as a psa 9 and of course i did also get a 7 so prime cards in case you're curious were the spiritual successor to level x cards which are in and of themselves spiritual successors to the ex era cards what does that all mean well basically uh, ultra rare card that has hollow foil around the edge and is supposed to be rarer than a regular holographic card that's what these are so um they tried to switch it up a little bit with the level x cards for the diamond and pearl era they landed on prime cards and then next up would obviously be black and white where they introduced full arts so it's crazy to think but full arts have been around a little bit longer than one would think originally starting in black and white base set uh and yeah you know it's one of those things where they tried it and now prime cards are actually kind of on their way back up in terms of popularity uh which just goes to show right like the initial reaction may not be the reaction when something is considered vintage and that's one thing to always consider when you go about looking at or considering which pokemon cards you might want to make part of your collection especially on a investment basis over here we have a beldum reverse foil from ex hidden legends as you can see one of the things we've covered quite a bit as we've encountered these cards is that beautiful hollow foil pattern for the reverse trading cards and the reverse foil trading cards featured a sort of uniform energy hollow foil which is super dope and you can see it right there. Interestingly enough, I have three metal energies running across the side, but then if I flip it, it's almost like in lines. So it looks like dark and colorless, water and steel. Yeah, and you can kind of really see it flicker back and forth there. This is why the EX era has become 
a fan favorite amongst many collectors, and I do believe it has quite a while to go. Now, a while back, I did a video where I showed you some packs that I had submitted to PSA. Of those packs, I also sacrificed some of the packs in order to get the slabs graded. And so here is a Gem Mint 10 um, Ho-Oh from the Elite Trainer Box for Shining Legends. Really pretty card. Um, you know, those particular ETBs are hilariously expensive nowadays. It's funny because I got my hand on two. I opened one. I, I opened both. I graded one of the cards and I submitted one of the cards as a pack. Both got 10s, which I'm really happy about. Just crazy to think if I had kept them sealed they would have gone that much up in value that quickly. Here is, of course, a Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno. I think everybody unanimously loves and recognizes this card. It is the stained glass promo from the Hidden Fates Elite Trainer Box, probably one of the most widely loved sets in the history of the Pokemon TCG, and with good reason. So uh, one of the things that is loved are even the promo cards, shockingly enough because, I mean, hey, this card has seen a lot of demand, and so I just had a few extra lying around that I threw it that I threw in there. Figured, let's get them graded. I got two Gem Mint 10s, as you can see, and then we immediately pivot, so now we're going back to Undaunted, uh, and you can tell maybe PSA did a little bit of shuffling on this because this card was 440, uh, and then this card was 456. So here we have a Legend hollow undaunted now these are cool cards mainly because these are the legend cards the legend cards the way they work is that they're basically two parts to the same hole so this is the bottom half and features groudon the top half features kyogre and then together as you can see the name says they are kyogre and groudon and yeah basically a two-parter uh, i have gotten a few of these graded in the past i it's incredibly difficult to find them in good enough condition and the primary reason for that is because for the most part they are entirely holographic as you can see here the entire card like there's nothing about this card that isn't holographic even the text is literally on the back of hollow foil so realistically speaking it can be incredibly difficult getting these cards graded the only good news is that they're sequentially certed psa 7s but golly gee willikers is it hard to pull anything off in terms of getting eights nines and even tens when there's just so much hollow foil and people really didn't like these cards back in the day so nowadays, obviously, like many things, uh, people are revisiting them, people are beginning to appreciate them a little bit more, and while I don't think they're going to rise to the popularity of things like Gold Stars or even some of the more beloved Pokemon EX, I do think there's an opportunity there if you're interested to pick these cards up at, hopefully, a steal, and then pursue them with a little bit of... Um, added vigor if you wanted to get them graded as PSA 9s or 10s. Do bear in mind, as 9s and 10s, these cards are very expensive already. Here's the Rayquaza and Deoxys bottom half, and yes, here is the top half, so it only makes sense to show these to you. Uh, again, graded sequentially, so 4, 5, 3, and 4, 5, 4, but unfortunately graded a PSA 7 and a PSA 8. One of the reasons that I really like these two particular sets in particular is because they're generation three legendaries so of course having been so close to generation um three it was obviously a slam dunk type of move to include kyogre and groudon rayquaza and deoxys so it just made a lot of sense and so you can see the generic artwork that they're going for there obviously the plastic where my thumb is is right in the middle but the card literally cuts in half and there are actually i believe even some promotional cards that have uh the full art version of the card so you'll get both in a way these are technically full art cards if anything they're spiritually in the same vein that's all i have to say here is the Mint 9 Umbreon Hollow uh, Prime card from Undaunted as well. As you can see, many of the cards that I really like are actually in Undaunted, which makes me wonder why it's actually not that uh, high in value, especially because both evolutions are in there as well. I realize that, you know, Kyogre and Groudon Legend cards might not be the most hot commodity, but I would think the Rayquaza, as well as the presence of evolutions, would drive the price up. Sound familiar, Pokemon TCG? Yeah, I see what you're doing. I found your pattern. Conspiracy theories aside, here is the Mint 9 Umbreon, so super happy because that's a card that I wanted. Happy to have it. P 
PSA 10s, way too expensive, so PSA 9s will suffice for me. The hollow on these things, so, so subtle. So it's actually a very good looking card, very sleek, um, and it has a very cool, crisp demeanor to it. Like I said, I wasn't kidding when I said I bought a few of these, um, and this is something, you know, that's a pretty good tactic most times. You wanna buy a few of them, pick amongst the best ones, and then get them graded. And then whether you can return the other ones, you can sell the other ones, you can keep the other ones in a binder, whatever the case is, but as you can see, Sometimes you send in, you know, three or four and none of them come back a 10. If you're lucky, one of them comes back a nine, which is what happened to me. Um, and one of them comes back like an eight. So you can have a little bit of coverage across the board, but realistically, that's what you're kind of looking for. Now, believe it or not, there is one additional PSA graded card that I did not show you earlier. I took it off the top because I know it's the very last card in this submission. This card is a SGC 9.5 gem mint Charizard gold star card. I know that because it was the very, it was a very major sticking point and the card that I got the most severe upcharge on. They charged me $250 to get this card graded. Mind you, this card took a year to get back to me. I will make a video addressing that and sort of giving my own thoughts on the topic. My main goal was to get all 15 videos out as well as provide you guys with the you know total cost analysis on this stuff to see what kind of value we generated but one of the things i'm going to do on the back end is also analyze that whole you know upcharge fiasco that psa had been doing when they had been returning some of the more you know late 2020 early 2021 psa graded returns so we know this is an SGC 9.5. SGC, although not very popular here in the Pokemon TCG, is a very well-known grading company, especially for sports. So I saw this up for PWCC auction and it sold for like $1,300, $1,400. So I bid, I bought it. I was like, all right, whatever. I ended up breaking it out of the case and I ended up submitting it to PSA. And, you know, if anything, just for gigs, I wanted to see what it would get. You'd be surprised to find out that it was graded a PSA 9. So perhaps evidence to the idea that, yeah, not every 9.5 is going to grade a 10. Um, in fact, PSA may grade more harshly. A couple of things about this card that I wanted to call out. Both of them are on this side of the card right here. So as you can see right there where my finger is, you can see a little bit of a white spot. So that's the first thing that I wanted to call out. You do have two little bits of whitening there. And then right over here, there's another little like weird, a little uh, th th like surface foiling or griming or soiling on the card itself. So the combination of the two got this card the grade that it did. However, all that said, hollow foil, nearly flawless. All of the scratches you're seeing are on the surface of the acrylic. And I distinctly remember this card because it was the first ever SGC card that I had ever owned. Um, again, like I said, not many people will go out of their way to get this card graded at SGC because most folks know better than to have such a valuable card graded with a relatively unknown grading card company, at least in the hobby of Pokemon. I hope this video kind of proves that, yo, SGC is valid, SGC is dope, SGC, they're good graders, they, you know, they know what they're doing. And again, don't believe me and my one limited experience, believe the millions of other cards that have likely gone through SGC's hands, because in the world of sports, they are a very, very premier type of, um, you know, grading company on par with, in many capacities, your Beckett, your PSA, etc., etc. But with all that said, friends, thanks again for checking out another video. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, feel free to leave a like on the video. And hey, if you want to support the channel and help me continue to grow and bring you great content like this, definitely feel free to subscribe to help the channel grow, as well as to let me know that I'm on the right track. I greatly appreciate your viewership, and I very, I very frequently get sentimental on this channel, but today I'm especially going to say, hey, thanks for sticking around, especially if you watched all 15 episodes of PSA Greater Returns, especially if you consistently show up and leave feedback, comments, or even engage with me in any meaningful way. Uh, this is a really fun and enjoyable part of the hobby, and I really take a lot of pride in um, being able to do this and share it with you guys here on the channel. So I do want to greatly say 
you know, we hit another milestone getting through, you know, at this point, more than 600 graded cards revealed on the channel. And I think that's worth saying thank you for because you all make this possible every single day with your support. But also just to say thanks for, you know, being a part of the hobby and making it as fun to engage with as possible. With all that said, hey, if you like today's video, like the video. If you want to subscribe and join the Gengar gang, please feel free to do so. It's an amazing community uh, and we are always looking to grow and, you know, bring you into the fold and engage with you as well. But with all that said, friends, for me and a PSA 9 Charizard Gold Star card from the EX Dragon Frontiers booster box or booster pack or wherever the hell it came from all the best thank you for your viewership as always and we will talk soon peace